Well, we've had a wonderful long time away, and um, I apologize in advance for sounding like Kermit the Frog this morning. Um, I did well um, in South Africa. All of us stayed very strong and healthy, and then right about a week and a half before I went to leave, I uh, encountered a little bit of warfare, which I may or may not talk to you about today, but the enemy tried to take my voice right before we went to go on TV, but the devil lost, and uh, we did uh, three days of TV that covered the whole continent of Africa and covered 11 million homes in the UK and 33 million homes in America. Can we give the Lord praise for that? Just amazing. So I want, uh, where's Ben at? Uh, ben, Destiny, Zoe, I don't know why I've got to hunt them down today, but uh, they're trying to catch a healing probably like me. But um, we we got on a plane, and it, we flew, I don't know, 11 hours on one, and then nine hours on the other. We had a three-hour layover in the middle, and I got to Dallas this week, and we were pretty strong, but as soon as we landed, I had to go into meetings two hours later, um, a consultation with a global prophetic uh, council uh, with Cindy Jacobs, and we had an awesome time. Why don't y'all come up here, and if somebody can find Ben for me and get him in here, that would be great. But um, just wanted you to, I couldn't have did what I did without my family helping me and y'all praying for, so I wanted you, come on up here, buddy. Ben has been a trooper. I'm telling you, I mean, he's, Traveled all over, living out of suitcases, these girls. And I got Destiny a real nice suitcase because, you know, she's a homebody. And it was all pretty and had all these flowers and whatever on it. And they broke it like the first uh, way over. So we've been riding around trying to pull this suitcase with one without one wheel. But uh, she's like, Dad, this is my home. This suitcase is my home. <laughs> Because, you know, we sold our house, and this is my home. I didn't, they broke my home. Anyhow, so we put a report in to get her suitcase repaired. And then by the next stop, they had broke Zoe's suitcase and one of mine. And then people are just, just I mean, they're mad at our bags, man. I mean, they don't like them. I even put a little tag on the bag that says, I love baggage hold, handlers. But they still tear, tear that thing up. Amen. They're like, man, I don't like this bag. Man, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Anyhow, we're praying for them anyhow. But uh, we, we had an amazing time over that we know of, that we counted. Over 500 souls were saved in our services. Can you give God praise for that? That's amazing. We had 105 in one service. One service, I spoke like 35 minutes. This church, um, uh, this church that we spoke in, uh, the Lord opened the door from literally from me drinking coffee with this guy, and uh, he asked us to speak. And uh, it's the largest, what they would call in their country, a colored church. Um, it's the largest colored church that we know of in South Africa, the most influential and we, when we went, those of you that don't know, we had a service. We had a weekend at Apostle David's church, uh, our legacy life of South Africa. And we had three days of meetings on TV. That's all we had. And anything you saw that happened, it was God. God opened all these doors. And we literally, some days, would preach at a church, and they would come over, and we wouldn't even get to finish the service. They'd pick us up in a car and drive us across town to speak at another service. We'd leave one church, we'd be at a colored church in the morning, then they'd take us across town to a black church, and then we might be at a white church the next day. It was crazy. And they're, they're really trying to deal with the racial reconciliation thing there. So I think in the whole time that we were there, we were probably only in really three churches that were integrated. Uh, the bulk of the churches were just one color or the other. But God just really, really is moving. God's really healing. We ministered in one church where they literally worship us, this, this guy worship a snake. 
And the snake was passed down from family member to family member, from his great-grandfather to his grandfather to, to him. And uh, he refused the snake, and so the snake came to kill him. Uh, this snake is a natural and a spiritual snake. And so the snake uh, came to kill him. He was shot in his head. Um, he lived. The bullet didn't uh, kill him, lodged in. And then he had a car accident. And then the, the, what the snake wanted was for him to give his oldest son uh, to sacrifice him. They literally give sacrifices of goats and firstborn children and whatever to these things for their, whatever the snake says. But he denied it. And the Lord had us to minister to him and break that curse off of him and release a word for blessing financially over him. And the, the people were just blown away because the Lord had me to call him out from the back of the building. And he's the one that's been under the attack. His wife used to be a, um, uh, I guess just what you'd say, a witch. His wife was one that helped read everybody's future. She would got set free. So I didn't even know that people had snakes that, that they would pass down to their family. The only, only snake I like is dead. <clears throat> I don't like any snakes. I don't like, I don't like spiders either. I kill all spiders. Yeah, but anyhow, we... we <laughs> We did have to, we had to kill some spiders. The girls were freaking out. And I had to run in there and rescue, the, rescue them from spiders that were really big in different places. But we stayed in people's homes. Um, the last week that we were there, uh, the Lord blessed us, and we stayed probably in one of the nicest uh, hotels that's in the nation. And then we were, for my birthday, blessed. Those of you that are watching on Facebook, we were blessed to be at a place called Mantigua, lodge and we got to actually ride around and look at lions and all this stuff it was crazy but that was all ble we were all blessed with it you want to say something and there was no wi-fi at all so he had like he was totally detached nothing i mean nothing you're out there hardly no air conditioning no wi-fi so we had like a good time of rest so we got him off his phone guys <laughs> okay joanne do you, are you happy now Okay, you're just happy. She's been on me about taking time away from everything. I got it. God. Anyhow, we had a wonderful time, but we preached. Um, this other pastor invited us. He we went out to coffee with him, and he started crying. And he said, "I've I've never done this." He pastored a large church that's under Rama. He said, "But you, but I need you to speak for me Sunday." And so that was one of the places where we spoke, and then they brought us over. And the Lord was very specific at that house to their church and spoke some things that just blew them away. And um, the, the biggest church that I, I failed to mention earlier, the Lord had me at the end. Uh, they only gave me a little window of time because this church is so large. It has five locations and thousands of members here and in different locations all over. And so you have to make sure you focus on everybody that's in all their different places and I had to be off at a certain time. So when 11 seconds was coming to a close, I was walking off the stage so the pastor could come up. It was very time-oriented. Well, then he comes back, and he asked me to pray, and the ministry felt like I needed to minister prophetically. So he extended the service. And after I finished prophesying for a few minutes, um, I turned around and prophesied over him. And uh, the Lord showed me that this pastor had been under such attack that a spirit of death had come against him and that when uh, he was asleep at night, his wife would lean over and she would check his breath to see if he was alive. And so when you're in a big place like this and you're satellite into everywhere and on radio and whatever they do, you don't want to just say that unless you know it's God. But I said it and the wife ran up, started crying, was holding her husband. He was crying like a baby. He, he has a conference in his nation called a Billionaires Conference. And he's very influential. He owns a number of businesses. So he's sitting there crying. His kids come up, run up crying. And uh, there was other things the Lord said. But afterwards, the wife came in, and she interrupted everybody in this billionaire's kind of meeting they were doing and said, man of God, uh, she said, it's spot on. She said, I've never had a word so spot on. She says, at night, me and my kids, we will literally check my, my husband to see if he's still breathing because there's been such an attack on his health. And the Lord liberated him, healed him, 
The next week he called me, took me out to eat, and he said, I've never, he's been pastoring 30 years, so I've never had anything like that happen. He said, uh, he said, I've had Cindy Jacobs here, I've had Apostle Eckhart, I've had other people preach. He said, but I've never had anybody so specifically minister to me and to my family. And he says, I had my staff make my ringtone on my phone, the prophetic word that you gave me. He said, I want to hear it every day. I need to remember what God's promise is to me. Isn't that amazing? Just amazing. And that, that could be echoed several times. We ministered on ha- Halloween night to, uh, there's five churches that joined together. That was an unplanned meeting. We were supposed to be having me a birthday party uh, with the Legacy Life of South Africa. They was going to do it early. But these churches asked to come together and ask us to minister. And we ministered that night, and another 28 people gave their life to the Lord uh, people that we called out under the anointing that literally had just the day before said they were, uh, they were going to kill themselves, uh, just the day before said they didn't know if they would even um, ever have a chance to come back to God. And so when, the, when God would speak to them and read their mail, the people in the church knew, and God would set them free. And uh, it was just amazing, just place after place after place. We ministered at a place where there's no running water, you may have watched that service. And um, so when I had to go to the bathroom in the service, they had to walk me up the hill t- through several places. They live in places there that are like um, a lot of like shacks or like lean-tos. Um, they're like built right up against each other. They call them townships. And so I was walking through. I, di- I didn't even know people live like that. But a lot of people and those places, but we were able to minister to them and meet needs, uh, able to give a lot of our offerings over to other pastors and other churches to help them. One pastor, we ministered at his church, uh, he was blessed because after being all month long, usually it's really hard for them. They only get their money, a lot of them, at the end of the month, and so you'll see them outside lining up to get their money at the first of the month to get their groceries and stuff. And so the pastor, I was talking to him, and, and I said, I, I feel like you're supposed to have this. And so he was like, are you sure? And I said, yes. And so I asked him, I said, what is the largest offering you have? He says, well, the largest offer we have every month is on the first Sunday of the month. And this was at a different time. And uh, the money that they blessed us with was more than that. So it was able to help pay his rent for his family and take care of his needs. Can you give God praise for it? <clears throat> so that's a lot of what your sowing to us did because it liberated us instead of having to depend upon some of that to be able to turn around and bless the pastors and the leaders and minister to their needs. You want to say something, Zoe? Sure, I do. Um, also, just a side note, the township is about the size, like the home is about the size of these two little things together. And a whole big family will live in a room this size. So, yes, it is crazy. And, and, it's, and it's dangerous. So the fact that we went out there, other people and pastors that we even know wouldn't go out there with us for fear of their life because it's so dangerous to go out there. So we really went just at the word of the Lord to go out into these places, even whenever there's fear and there's danger and we're in these places that nobody else will go to, we went. And so you guys and your prayers, I mean, we felt the prayers and y'all's prayers, you know, like it, without you guys, we could not have have made it through, like especially Destiny. I'm sure she was, after week one, she was like, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, Dad, will you give me a ticket back? And we're like, no. <laughs> but um, we had an amazing time. Um, Destiny and I ministered together one time, yeah. and that was amazing. And uh, the Lord just used us to teach young girls about purity because a lot of young girls don't know their value or their worth. And um, many girls get pregnant very young there. And even like people that are older, they continue to have babies because then if you have a baby under a certain age, you get money. And so you see tons of children that are unfed, unclothed, running around places just because the parents are. Yeah, and Destin, what, tell, tell Destin. They, when, well, I wanted to add on to this, but like when they have the kids, they only get like 300 rand a month, which is less than $30. So the income is very different there. Um, so it's very challenging to see those girls go through that, you know. 
Um, so it was really cool to speak into their lives. I, I enjoyed it. Oh, and um, there was one night where we all got to um, go out and do, like, ministry on the streets. It was prophetic evangelism. It was really cool. Like, I loved being out there, and, you like, all the people were excited because they don't normally get to do that. Um, so we were teaching them, and um, when we were out there, there was, these, there was this little boy, and he didn't have any pants, no diaper, nothing. They are just out there. So we were able to go and bless them and bring them diapers. And then um, we also got to go to, like, an orphanage. So that was, like, the highlight of the time for me. I loved it, and we got to minister to all these kids. And you could tell, like, they really looked up to my dad because they have, like, all these mothers taking care of the kids, but they're without a father. So I really, like, just seeing them look up to my dad, I'm like, oh, my gosh, you can, like, take him. Like, I want you to have a dad. <laughs> so they all, like, loved my dad. It was so sweet. It was amazing being there. And I look forward to, like, um, having teams come, and then y'all get to meet those kids, and y'all be able to see this and be a part of this movement and awakening and all this love that's being brought to South Africa. I'm excited. So it'll be cool. Yeah. <laughs> The rhinos. His favorite part was the rhinos. You can go sit down if you want, Ben. Give it up for these, my family. I, I feel like I'm doing it a, a great injustice. Uh, I'm not telling you enough, but we ministered a lot. There were some times that we didn't, didn't get to rest much, so I would maybe leave Destiny and Ben at the house with some people or something because there was, we was just going every day. Uh, we uh, Destiny did get to kiss an elephant, if you didn't. She said, I want to kiss an elephant, Daddy. And that picture wasn't up there today, but you saw her with the elephant, but she actually kissed the elephant. And then she also said she was kissing the ground when she got home because she's ready to be back, back in America. And man, oh man, uh, we had a time when we got back to the this, gen, uh, this prophetic conference, the global conference, prophetic summit and uh maybe today i will share a little bit about that and and uh and impart some from that I, in fact i brought a prayer cloth back that all the prophets from 56 nations laid hands on and um and i'm going to give each of you from my prayer cloth i'm going to cut a piece off of it today and give each one of you a part of it because i want that blessing to be in your household too amen so uh we were ministering prophetically. This, I had the esteemed honor to be invited along with these 50 prophets from 56 nations in private meetings on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. Cindy Jacobs invited us. And so that was powerful. And there were some things that God did that was just unbelievable. How many have watched the news recently with Zimbabwe? Have you seen uh, what's going on in Zimbabwe? Well, we literally, I watched it. We prayed and released decrees and declarations over an apostle, a prophet from, from Zimbabwe. And within 24 hours, uh, things shifted in the government. Exactly what we prophesied shifted. And the next day they had um, the military had overtaken Zimbabwe. This is years of tyranny of this particular man. So you just need to keep praying for Zimbabwe that God will shift it. And God will move there. Amen. Stand to your feet with me. I'm not going to be long before you. Amen. I don't know what time it is. What time is it? It's 1130. I got my watch on Dallas time still. I'm sorry. So I don't want to preach that long. Um, all right. All right. Put your hand on your heart and let's just pray in the Holy Spirit. Father, thank you that we're being changed into your image from glory to glory. We're being changed into another man, that you're shifting us, that you're moving us, that you're making us to be the vessels that you've called us to be. We know it's not about the vessel. It's about what's in the vessel. And so we thank you that that glory, that anointing, that, that greater uh, flow of the Spirit is activated and functioning and moving inside of us so that we can bring salvation to Orlando, salvation to the nations. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Amen. Y'all have been in a series, I understand, since before I left. 
that was going to be about eight weeks long or 12 weeks long, and it's become the never-ending series from what I hear. I understand that Ted sent some type of video over to uh, Pastor, Pastor Tyrone about some type of long series. Anyhow, today I get to be in something, and I was excited about sharing this part when we were planning the series, um, and I was talking with uh, uh, Pastor Mac about it. I was talking about how this would be really cool to talk about it, and I thought he was going to get to preach it. And, and y'all preach so long on the other parts that I get to preach this part. So I'm a little excited. So this, this message has been cooking for a while, and uh, I'm glad to bring it to you. We've been talking about growth, and I understand you've got all kinds of stuff going on with the G. You've got glory, and what else is it? What else is the G? Gathering, grounded. Anybody know what, know what we're talking about? Eight of you, amen. Governing, grounding, guiding, guarding, amen. Greater glory. And then you went into the R, which was what? Reach and what? Redemption. Y'all can talk a little louder. What else? Reset. So you've been talking about that. But today for a few minutes, we're going to talk about, oh, we're going to own it. We're going to own it. We're going to uh, have ownership. Say, own it. Amen. So I, I pray that you get this in your spirit today and, and that God will open up your heart so you can get it. You know, a lot of people, they only rent it. We have a lot of people who have rent a faith. We have a lot of people who have rent a word. We have a lot of people who rent a praise. They, 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 they come to church and somebody else is praising, so they ride somebody else's praise. I call that rent a praise. That one lady sings that song, somebody put a praise on it, right? But um, there's, a, there's a lot of people that they, they can't put a praise on it because they don't got their own praise. They don't own it, they rent it. They rent it on Sunday, but on Monday they have a whole nother song. Uh, we have a lot of people that rent a prayer. Have you ever run into those people? They, they ask you to pray for them, and they won't pray for themselves. Have you ever ran into those people? They run around to 15 people, get all of us busy praying for them, and they don't even spend an hour praying for their own self. They have rent a prayer. Look at your neighbor say, you don't need to rent a prayer. You need to own it. You need to... You need to own your own prayer life. You need to own your own praise life. Come on, somebody. You need to own your own faith. We got a lot of people who have rent of faith. Rent of faith. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to let T.D. Jakes faith it for me. I'm going I'm to listen to Dad Hagen CDs, and I'm going to rent of faith. Cassettes, rent of faith. They, got, they don't have their own faith. They have to rely on others. Now, I understand. You can, you, I know some of you got your arguments going in your head right now against what I'm talking about. Uh, the, the four guys that bore the guy and their faith, is they tore the roof off the sucker, and they, they, they lowered the guy down, and it was their faith that made the guy healed. So there are times that you can borrow somebody else's faith, and, but it, that's not the usual. Usually throughout Scripture, the person that had the miracle had to have the faith. Talk to me, church. So you can't rent a faith. You got to have your own faith. You got to own the faith. Say, I got to own it. We got too many renters and not enough owners in the kingdom. We got too many renters and not enough owners. People that own, that don't own their own faith, they don't own their own prayer life, they don't own their own praise life. They come in here and ride somebody else's praise. Don't own your own prophecy, your own prophetic word. Can't prophesy over yourself. You need somebody to give you a word every day. If you don't get a word and you're upset and you're sad, I hope you're ready for me today because I'm coming at you, okay? Uh, it, we, we got people that they need a word. You, some of you got 50 billion words over the subject and you still hadn't got up and did something. Well, you got to own it yourself. Are you with me? You got to own it. Some point in time, there's enough, com uh, enough uh, confirmations that you can move forward with what the word that God's given you. Say, own it. 
Come on, shout on it. We got a lot of people that got rent a joy. Rent a joy. Rent a joy. We need to establish these dot coms. Rent a joy dot com. We, we, you get comedians, we get somebody that gives you something that makes you happy. It's temporary happiness. You get, you got, some of you got, uh, you got, you got um, retail therapy. That's what makes you happy. Is more you buy, and as soon as you get through buying it, you get home, you get sad because you, you realize the next week you get the bill because you just had retail therapy and you thought that that's how you was going to get joy. You don't get joy through things or through stuff. You get joy through a relationship with Jesus. Are you in this house? A lot of people, they only, get, they only feel joy when they're buying something. They only feel joy when, some, when they're in a movie. They only feel joy when they're doing something. I was on a plane last night sitting with two guys, little Indian dudes from India. They're, they're like seven years old, five years old. They're up beside me. They're kicking me, and they're pushing me, and they're talking. And the little kid's running around, putting his head between the seats to his mom. I'm bored. I'm bored. Mama, I'm bored. And I was thinking, my God, why did you put me up here with your youngins? The, the, the Indian husband and the wife, they're sitting back there trying to put their earphones and go to sleep, and they left me with their two kids. I'm like, Jesus, help me. That kid kicked me, I don't know how many times, hit me, I don't know how many times. Uh, and he, was, he was just, he was moving. You, you got those, uh, those things I wanted to give to the kids? Uh, if you're back there in the back, I wanted to, I want to bless the kids. I asked to keep the kids in the service today, so I'm going to sugar your kids up or non-sugar your kids up. I don't know. Ben, put that down, buddy. I'm preaching. Put it down. We're not playing games when I preach. All right. Hey, bring them up here to me. I want to bless the kids. All right. All, all you kids, come up here. If you're in Children's Church Life Kids, come up here. I got something for you. Is that all right? Y'all missing out on Life Kids, but I just almost forgot this. Give it up for the Life Kids. You want to give it to them? We got, we got something for you. I got th- I'll take that. Thank you. All right. These are, these are, you can only get them in South Africa. All right. Any more? Any more kids? If we'll, give, we'll give some to some of the big kids, too, if you want. You can pass them out. There, there's one. We, we, what you can do is just share with a few people around you. Is that all right? Is that all right? <laughs> well, we got a lot of people that only get they only get joy when they when they get around people that help them have joy. They're like that little kid on the plane, and they're bored. Anybody in this house? That's enough. That's enough. We'll give you more later. There's the afterwards. We 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 have back there on the table some biltong. If you don't know what that is, it's just what they call in South Africa, and I can't insult it like this. So if you're watching from South Africa, I'm not, I'm not insulting Bill Tong, but I'm trying to give a point of reference for our people. It's like what we would call jerky, but it's like a thousand gazillion times better. It's, and I brought you some back there on the table. And then we got Robo's tea, which basically means red bush tea. And uh, it's, it's good. It's something we drink every day. And so in a little bit, we'll take a break and let you go back there and try all that. Is that okay? Okay. Now stay with me. Stay with me. I think these are sugar-free, so that's why Destiny likes them so much, or they're, they're not as much sugar. All right. So we got a lot of people got rent a joy. Say rent a joy. A lot of people have rent a joy. If you want to get some more of them back there, Zoe, from behind there, you can get some more and give them out to a few people. Rent a joy. So they get joy by going to a movie. They get joy by buying something. They get joy by, um, by something like that little kid up there on the plane with me, kicking me up against the, the leg the whole time. I'm bored. I'm bored. Mom, I'm bored. Can I have your phone? I'm bored. Can I have your phone? She said, no, you can't have my phone. The, 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 air, the airplane said, we can't have the phones on right now. I'm bored. I'm bored. I need your phone. I don't know how long, 20-something minutes. This kid did not stop, David. I'm bored. I looked over at him, and I was like, dude, she said no. He looked at me like, he looked at me like, like I was cussing at him. He put his head back through the seats. Turned around, his feet coming up against me again. I'm bored. I'm bored. And that's the way a lot of people are in the kingdom. People in the church, they're, they're like little babies, still little. They got to be entertained. They can't get joy because they don't have their own prayer life. They don't have their own worship life. Are you in the house? They, get, they, don't have, they, don't, they, they have to be entertained. It's like, play me a song, Piper. Play me a song. Make me happy. 
make me feel good. I need somebody to blow on me. I need somebody to prophesy over me, somebody to give me a word. But some point in time, you got to be able to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, prophesy over yourself, release a word over yourself. you got to own this thing. you got to grow up. Now, when I was a child, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I thought like a child. I, 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 I spoke like a child. I acted like a child. But when I became a man, I put all that stuff away. Are you in the house? So there comes a point in time that, you, that instead of going to 15 people and asking for 15 people to pray for you, you might want to just take 15 minutes and pray for yourself. Apply the word for yourself. Get the word out. Instead of asking for people to prophesy over you, you might want to just get the word out and just decree the word over yourself. You have to own it. Turn to your neighbor and say, own it. Own it. Well, it's everybody's fault but yours. It's everybody's fault but yours. I'm not growing, so I'm leaving this church and going somewhere else. No, you're not growing because you don't have a prayer life through the week. I mean, we, can't, we can't feed you enough in two hours on Sunday to help you to grow up and be who God wants you to be. You manage your own prayer life. In fact, when you come to church, it's not about being fed. It's about you coming with a psalm, with a hymn, with a word to encourage somebody else in their calling. Are you here in the house? Look at your neighbor and say, own it. So you have to own it. There's a lot of people that, that they have a rent a church mentality. They rent the church until they're tired of the church, and they go find another church. They're renters instead of owners. They don't own the vision. They don't own the church. It's a Yes, you are. No, but it ain't, I mean, you can't have a rent of faith. You can't, you can't, you can't rent Pastor Mac's faith. And you can't have a rent of church and show up to church every once in a blue moon and have a church's vision. You, gotta have, a, you have to have your own prayer life every day. Amen. Are you getting anything out of this in your spirit? Some of y'all was wanting to be all edified and encouraged. I am edifying you. I'm just edifying a different part of you, your spirit man. I know I've, 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 I've totally made some of your flesh mad. It's all right. I've, I'm aimed to get your spirit man to grow. Amen. Say, I am a spirit. I possess my soul. And I live in a body. Y'all went really quiet when you said possess my soul. You said, say what? I say, I'm a spirit. I possess my soul, there you go, you said it, and I live in a body. That means you possess your mind, your will, and your emotions. I'm not denying the fact that you have emotions. You know, all of us have emotions, but you should own them. Say, own it. Your spirit should own your emotions. Your emotions don't lead you. Come on, talk to me. My, I, well, I don't feel like it. Who gives a flip? It doesn't matter what you feel like. It doesn't matter what you feel like. Turn to your neighbor and say, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you feel. Listen, we walk by faith and not by sight. I don't feel like it. If I did, did, did what I didn't feel like, I, I wouldn't do a lot of what I do. I don't feel like it. Talk to me. I don't feel like, I don't feel saved. You get up on Monday morning and you don't feel saved. Anybody been like that? Oh yeah, I put my feet up in the air. I don't, sometimes you don't feel it, but that doesn't give you the permission to live contrary to it. Amen, you walk by faith and not by sight. It's not by my feelings. Because if I do what I feel, the, the, the enemy's plan is you just led by your feelings. Nothing but feelings. And he'll lead you around like a pig with, with one of those rings through your nose on a chain, and he'll pull you wherever. How to walk by faith. Turn to your neighbor and say, by faith. Now, you only, you only have me every once in a while so y'all can thank God. You got pastor that can love on you and other people that can love on you. But I... Uh, I'll be back in a few weeks, and I'll, I'll come check on you and release some more. But I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to help you today to own it, to own it. You cannot, listen, you cannot grow up if you don't own it. Well, if pastor would call another prayer meeting, I would grow.
If he would, if he would do this, if he'd do that, we would grow. No, listen to me. Everybody look. Come here. Come here. Sheep reproduce sheep. People reproduce people. Right? His place is to give himself to prayer and fasting and the word and to bring you a word. Your place is to go and make disciples. Who are your disciples? Who's, a, who's another couple that's like you that you're re- reproducing yourself in? Another, another man, another woman. That's what God wants to do. I'm, I'm only going to be like a few more minutes because I understand we're going to have it eaten and all kinds of stuff. I got some, got some biltong back there, hallelujah, and some, uh, some robust tea. All right, seven sons of Sceva said, we're going to cast the devil out. And the devil said, no, we're going to cast you out. And they cast them out. It wasn't fun. It wasn't fun. Hey, when I was in South Africa recently, it wasn't fun when a witch came into the house and into the bedroom and stood bodily at, at my door. It was not fun. It felt like death came into my room. And I commanded it to go, but then that spirit tried to stay, tried to take me out. That heaviness. She, she left, but bodily, I saw her with my eyes come into my door of my house, into my bedroom. That's only happened twice in my life. But I couldn't command her to go, and she wouldn't have went if I wouldn't have stepped up in, in something that I knew out of my spirit. I have to own it. Are you here? All you hold on to your kids just for like five more minutes. We'll make it. Are you all in? Oh, come on, I said, are you all in? Are, are you all in for what God has? Are you, are you buying in? Because if you're buying in and you're all in, then when everything goes crazy, you're going to be the one with your head on straight. When everybody's jumping ship, you're the one that's faithful. You own. You own the vision. It's not Apostle Joshua's vision. It's not Pastor Mac's vision. It's Dr. not Dr. Yune's vision. We we believe in it. We've we've we own it, but it's all of ours. Amen. We own it. Say ownership. Second Kings chapter four. I will give you a scripture. Don't have time to go through all this. But the woman, she had a need. And the prophet told her, what do you have in your house? She said, I I don't have anything except a pot of oil. He said, go and borrow vessels, borrow not a few. You and your sons close the doors and pour the oil. She did as the prophet said. The oil increased, multiplied to the place that she was able to pay off all her debt. Are you in the house? She was, I'm, I'm just, uh, just summarizing this. She was able to pay off all her debt. And the Bible says she and her sons, David, she and her sons lived off the rest. How many would like to have such a blessing come on you that you and your children and your children's children could live off of it? Come on, that's a legacy. That's a blessing. But she had to own it. She didn't listen. She had to own it. He said, what is in your house? What do you have? She said, I have oil. He says, that's enough. I'll increase the anointing. I'll increase the oil. And I'll make a way for you. So it is with us in the kingdom. We have to have oil ourselves. There are five virgins that were wise. They had oil in their lamps and five that did not. They went out looking for oil 
when it came. Those were the ones that had rent of faith. They had a rent of prayer life. They stayed asleep. They didn't make sure they had their own oil. The five that had oil, they were ready. Are you here in the house? They owned it. This woman, she had oil in her house. They came to take her sons, but she said, I have oil. He said, okay, now that's enough. Take what you have. I will take that. I will use it to bring you a breakthrough. Listen, your breakthrough is not in finding somebody to blow on you or pray for you or run here or run there or go to another conference or go to another church. you got to own it yourself, and you got to stand in your own pea patch. Come on, like Shamgar, and you got to say, enough is enough. The Philistines are not taking my peas anymore. You don't go over there to find your breakthrough. You stay in your own pea patch, in your own place, and you own it, and you fight for it until God gives you the breakthrough. Come on. When you go to another place, you're going to find out. Listen, you're going to find out. You can run here, run there. The Bible says there will be a famine for the hearing of the word of the Lord. There's a famine. It's not a famine for the word. It's a famine for the hearing of it. People don't want to hear it. Why is it that everybody wants to hear me prophesy and hear our elders and our people prophesy when we're prophesying over you blessings? But then when you get in the middle of warfare and you want to make a decision to get up and go wherever you want to go, you don't want to listen to that prophetic word anymore. You want to go find somebody else to prophesy to you to get you up and move you somewhere else. Keep to yourself itching words, itching ears so you can get up and do what you want to do. Why is it? Because you're still a teenager. You're still a baby. You've not grown up into a man and to a woman of God that can stand and defend and own what God has given you. Your inheritance is in the house. Your breakthrough is in the house. Your deliverance is in the house. Come on, the oil will flow when you shut the doors in the house and all outside influences you push out and you get in that house in prayer on your own. The oil will increase in the house. It didn't increase out in the streets. It didn't increase when she went to her neighbor's house. It didn't increase where she went somewhere else. She stayed in her house with the oil that God gave her, with the word that was over her life from the prophet, and that word came over that oil, and that oil reproduced until she had every need met and her kids had every need met. Are you hearing me in this house? Oil doesn't multiply because you go here and there. Oil multiplies when you stay in the commanded place of his blessing. Psalms 133, behold how good and pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. didn't say to pass through and to rent a little bit of unity and rent a little bit of faith and rent a little place in the house. He said dwell, stay put, stay in the house and let the oil increase. He said it's like the oil that ran down Aaron's beard even into his garments. Where does the oil come from? The oil comes from staying up under headship in the word of the Lord and letting it flow into your life. Hallelujah. Well, apostle, you're not here. Come on, you have to understand the Apostle Paul, John, Peter, they were locked away in prisons for years. They couldn't preach to their churches. They couldn't be everywhere. They were not omnipresent. They had churches all over, but they would just send a letter. Come on, somebody. They were an apostolic people. They had raised up a church with elders. They didn't raise it up for it to be all centered around Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul wasn't in that church every week. He was in Galatia. He was in Thessalonica. Come on, are you in this house? He was at Ephesus. He was at different parts of the world. Their faith wasn't a rent of faith. They didn't just come when the pastor came. They had faith. They were connected to what God had given them. And because they were, the oil increased in that house and their needs were met. I'll tell you, I'll tell you real quick, like Acts chapter 4, the Bible says, Neither was there any among them that lacked for anything. Great power was upon the apostles, and great grace was upon them all. Why? Because they understood. The Bible says they didn't have anything uh, that, that was just their own. They, they, they had all things in common. So it's not my church. It's not Joshua's church. It's not Pastor Max's church. It's our church. And when we come into that, then in that place, then he can let the oil flow. I'm only going to be like maybe three more minutes. He'll give me three more minutes. Three, six, nine, twelve. You fell for it again. Fifteen. Amen. All right, I'm going to close with this. Moses, Moses, what's in your hand? Exodus. Exodus is the passage of Scripture. Moses, hey, Moses, 
what's in your hand? He didn't say, uh, go over there and rent something, bring something, get something you don't have. He said, what do you have? What do you own? What's in your hand? What's in your hand? What do you own? That's what he's asking him. What do you own? He said, I'll take what you own and I'll, I'll use it. I'll bless it. He said, I have a rod. A rod, 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 rod if, you, if you know, because he was a he says, this, this stutterer. So he says, rod, 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 rod. And, and God said, that's enough. And he took his rod. rod, 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 rod. And he, th- he said, throw it down. And he threw it down and it became a snake. And Moses backed up off of that snake. He said, pick it up. And he went, pick it up. A snake? I would have been like, killed a snake. But he said, pick it up. And he reached down and picked it up by its tail. And it became a rod. What is he saying? Whatever you need is in what you have. Come on, lift your hands up. Somebody said, why a snake? Because there came a day that God used that very rod to perform a miracle to let Pharaoh know that his snakes and his magicians were no, not even the same league or class. They threw down their pots and their snakes formed, but his snake went and ate up all their snakes. Are you in the house? People that have rent of faith, their faith will get ate up. But people that own their faith and own their prayer life and own their worship life and they own the vision of their house, the oil will increase and it will overtake the plans of the wicked one. Are you in the house? You say, well, is this just about legacy? No, it's not just about legacy. It's a way of life. It's a kingdom thing. I preached in, I don't know how many churches while I was away. I preached all over. I preached in fields. I preached in in townships. I preached to thousands. We preached on TV to millions. I preached to a bunch of people. And the same message is true anywhere I go. The same message is true anywhere I go. It is not a message just for legacy. It's a kingdom thing. Say it's a kingdom thing. I have to own my faith. So tomorrow morning when you get up, if you don't own your own prayer life, the devil will own you. Are you hearing me? Circumstances will own you. Some of y'all didn't like that. Y'all were like, no, I bind that. Oh, you better bind it. You better get to praying. Because whatever you don't own will own you. Are you here? You have to own it. And not as soon as, as soon as you came into this kingdom, as soon as you said, I do, I'm in, I'm living for you. From that day, you were in war. And I don't care if you want to do it or not. When you get up in the morning, you're in war. Them guys that sign up for a military, they find themselves in war. They don't get up on Monday in Afghanistan or wherever they're at, or Vietnam, do they, Bill, and say, I don't want to do this. I want to go home. They get up out of that fox hole and they put their head up they're gonna get it shot down they have to be wise are you here in this house so it is in the kingdom you have to own your faith you have to own your own prayer life you have to own your own worship if all you worship is when you come to church there's no wonder why when we worship we have to carry so many people's butts into the glory you can't because you don't worship at home hello i love you he said, but in church. Yes, I did. You got one. You're sitting on it. Some of you sit on it too long. You're not going forward. Amen. So own your prayer life. Own your worship life. Teach your kids to worship in their house. They won't have to act the fool and have to play all kinds of games in church if you teach them to worship at home. Amen. 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 Own it. Turn your neighbor and say, own it. You know what? Here's, I'm going to tell you why. Listen to me. Renters pay 100% interest. 100% interest. And at the end of their life, Eli, you could teach us all this on finances. At the end of their life, they have dumped 
100% into something they never own. They can't pass it to anybody else. Are you hearing me? Now, I'm not getting on to any of you that rent houses. I'm not trying to tell you because all of us are in different places. But I'm trying to liken it unto your faith. If you're riding somebody else's faith, if you're riding somebody else's prayer, you'll never own it. You're renting it. You're borrowing it on Sunday. You feel good for a few hours. You go home on Monday, and you let that devil take you to the woodshed. Come on. Come on, own it. Own it. I can't own this for you. I can't come to your house and pray for you. Come on, I'm telling you. I can't come to your house and worship for you. I can't come to your house. I can't give for you. I would love, I would love, I wish I could give for you and get you all a breakthrough. But you have to do it yourself. You have to own it. When I'm gone next week and we come to church and, and, and different people are coming to church and doing things, you have to own this vision. It has to be yours. If you own it, then you're showing up early and you're praying in the Holy Ghost because this is our vision. You own it, you're staying out late and you're helping take things down because you know the day's coming. We're going to own a bunch of land and buildings. God's going to be faithful because he said if we're faithful over a few things, we're made ruler over much. And not just here, listen to me. Churches are going to come out of this house throughout this city. The Lord's told us at least five in this region. And out of this, this land, there's churches coming. Can I tell you, I see churches coming all over this nation. I mean, since, since I've stepped and did what God said to do and entrusted this, I've got faith for schools of prophets and schools of worship. And I've got faith for more churches to be planted throughout America and throughout the nations. And when I go or when we send some other son or other people to go do these things, we're not leaving legacy. We're expanding legacy. Are you hearing me? I didn't leave it. We're just expanding. We're taking the tent post to make it grow. Stand to your feet with me. Do you own it? Lift your hands up. I hope you know that I love you. Can you come to the... I hope you know that I love you. And I only speak to you plainly like this to help you. To help you grow. It's not, not about being mean to you. It's all with the intention of a father's heart to help you grow. Amen. Mamas are really sweet and nice. And they love on you and make you feel good. Daddies sometimes have to kind of push you to do. All right? I love you. Lift your hands up. Ask the Lord if there's an area in your life that you're not owning. Ask him right now. Is there something that I've that I just been renting? Have I been renting somebody else's worship? Have I been renting somebody else's prayer? Have I been asking Prophet Julian and Rosa to pray for me and prophesy over me and come to the hospital and do everything when I need to get my own prayer? Talk to me. Come on, lift your hands up. I've been asking Pastor uh, David and Susie Alderman to help me. I, I see breakthrough in you financially. Can you help me? When I just need to learn to do the same thing they do, I need to be a giver, a tither, offerings. I need to... I need to invest and be a wise steward over what I have. Come on, lift your hands. Ask him right now. Own it. Own it. Own it. Own it. Well, it's because of this. No, 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 no. Stop blame shifting. Nobody else's fault. You're the man in the mirror. What do you need to own? There's, there's some people who are bound, oppressed. They need deliverance, and they need you to own your faith. Come on. They don't need you to come up to them and just have a, a rent of a rent of faith mentality. It's gonna hurt you and hurt them if that's all you have. Come on, lift those hands up. Ask him. Ask him. If you're watching by way of webcast, I know this word has been strong today and it's been been really to the point, but he loves you. He loves you and he wants you to have your own faith, your own prayer life, your own worship life. He wants to he wants to raise you up. He wants to do things in you. Just, just push the coffee table back. Lift your hands up towards him and say, I give myself to you, Jesus. I give myself away to you. I give myself away to you, Jesus, so you can use me. Come on, Zoe, sing it out. Give myself away. 
Come on, lift those hands up. I give myself.